mud, mud. I love your sound. I'm absolutely, positively wild about mud. I can't go around to a smoke god story of these people that were discovered by um, Olaf Johnson and his father um, in the Hyperboreum in the North. It's a really excellent tale. Have you ever heard that? They're all in, they're all eight foot tall in silks, really highly advanced with this culture. Yeah, they look after them, they take them under their wing, but these people are beautiful. And they're in here with us, and they're not far away, and it's not the only book that talks about them. It's not the gods. As we would come to expect, we have classic Flat Earth British here. He can't be bothered to cite any sources, so I have to do the digging for him. He appears to be naming Osa Johnson, as my assumption, kind of hard to hear sometimes. She was, along with her husband Martin, famous American explorers in the early 20th century. Naturally, they never claimed to find 8 foot tall giant Hyperboreans. This claim, I'm assuming, is related to the ancient Greek myth of a race of giants beyond the north wind, called the Hyperboreans, or that's my understanding of it, at least. Uh, the two are completely unrelated topics, I have no clue how he stuck them together. He appears just to be making shit up as usual. Yo, Philip, yo, Philip, Mark, I'm convinced that there's other extra lands out there. There's no way that all these lands are yeah. on the maps and they're not on the maps anymore. And I just think they've been pulling so off. The all truck. waters displace, all land is displaced. What's, do you know what? They could probably be displaced with all of that extra water that's out there, right? Millions of square miles. Probably. They could do that with math. Well, with yeah. These, and these that's people the are extra land. They're diplomats. They diplomats, they do not have to follow or go to any tribunal courts like we do. Claims of undiscovered or hidden land are very common among conspiracy circles. How this claim is still so prevalent in the age of airplanes and satellites is beyond me, but let's be honest, we aren't necessarily talking about the sharpest tools in the shed here. And as far as evidence goes, I suppose flat earth British spouting random fucking numbers and our host repeatedly shouting the word diplomat is as much proof as we need about these conspiracies. Jive ass dude don't got no brains in here. Talking about the frequency, we had a book of uh, brothers of Strugatsky who, who were talking about, uh, you know, some guy who was tra traveling into space and he landed in the planet with this uh, not... Uh, ball system but you know inner ball system so like they had uh those buildings uh, curved so they w would you know um level up the place because it was you know like inside curved so whatever the strakatsky brothers were science fiction authors in soviet russia their best known work is roadside picnic a fantastic book that the stalker games actually are based around their writings have jack shit to do with reality. Unless, of course, you're a Scientologist. Then, for some reason, science fiction writers somehow know all about reality. So, and they had all these frequencies there, and uh, that's why I'm trying to say that because we have these mobile uh, connections, uh, like uh, cellular towers, right? We have uh, some strange devices. And back then, back in the days, all those Tartarians had some devices on their, you know, on their buildings also. And uh, perhaps they had frequency. Wow, a lot to unpack here. What is this nebulous? frequency you keep referring to. What was it changed to? What was it changed from? I'm sure we'll get a much more in-depth explanation. I'm asking questions. And you know, Martin, you saying that, uh, who's saying they changed the frequency? You said, Richard. So, I mean, they could have changed the frequency. And this yes. is how they do it. They, you know, erase all the frequency. frequency, right? How do they change this frequency? What frequency is being changed? Who are they? What is the frequency, Kenneth? Who's on first? What's on second? And I don't know who's on third. Do you know the fellow's name? Yes. It's about music. Everything is about frequency. Yeah. It's, it's about and what we understood and know. And what, what we receive right now, you know, we had the difference when Tesla was, uh, you know, inventing electricity versus Edison, uh, DC, AC stuff, all this crap, you know. So AC, DC, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
And you know, oh, yeah, yeah. we we know who who won. We know who won, right? You know, so uh, that's why we have the change of frequency, and all this electricity is used to control the system, to calm us down, to collect our energy. We're like batteries for this freaking system, you know. Right, exactly. Wait, 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 wait. So the Matrix was actually a documentary. AC and DC power zap us of our energy by using frequency to calm us down? Does that mean I would be more angry if I didn't have a cell phone? Is that what you're saying? Did Tesla defeat Edison? Did Edison defeat Tesla? Did you shook me all night long? The crap is flying so fast out of their mouths, it's hard to keep your head down. The shit's gonna hit the fan. Watch that That's why it's all good. Go outside with your shoes off every once in a while. Let your feet touch the ground. Be grounded. You know, be grounded for a while. You'll feel better. I'm telling you, man. If you're feeling like shit and you're feeling sad. Get on the city, man. Get on the city. Yeah, I'm walking in the forest. I'm, I'm walking in the forest. You know, it's the best thing that you have to do. The lack of education and even the most basic fundamental ideas of electricity is quite impressive here. Somehow the evil people have been using us as batteries by changing our frequency. But you can be free of that control by walking in the woods? It's quite the sage advice there, gentlemen. I'm going to start ordering some magnets because I saw that Martin has some magnets and you keep that on you. That's actually pretty interesting. Always. Always next to me, all around, in the park here. I got a meteor. Don't know where that's come from because it ain't out of ability space. But it's coming from somewhere, yeah? So if it's got magnetic properties, and it's a meteor, right? Makes sense. I guess if you're gonna fail at understanding electricity, you're probably gonna fail at understanding magnetism. And it's got electric striations across it as well, you know, like them Litchfield patterns all over it. I can't really show you, but they are on it. Which, um, when you were on the paper that come with it, it said that it got pulled apart when it entered the atmosphere. But it got pulled apart, on, like, not when it entered the atmosphere. But yeah, very unusual. I wonder where that one come from. A few minutes later. It's these violence, man. It's these, uh, the idea that uh, people's adults put children on trains and ship them around across the world. All the trays tip the iceberg, man. People were dropping their kids off at like stations where you could sell them and it shipped off to Australia. They would pay money to take their children, take them to Australia. What happened to them? I don't know. Um, and they just, a lot of them just went to this place to be happily abused. And the stories of them, they end up in these mental institutions. It's like this cycle. A whole generation is treated exactly en masse. Mass. Yes. So every country's doing the same, Richard. I bet you the same stories in America, Australia, everywhere. The orphan train movement, which is what I think they're trying to talk about, was a real thing that happened for about 70 years between 1854 and 1929 here in America. It was an attempt to deal with the large numbers of homeless children on the larger East Coast cities before the advent of foster care. In our modern times, we can look upon this and see it as a wrong, sure. But it seems to have been a well-intentioned attempt at providing orphan children with a better life. Can't wait to see how our League of Extraordinary Idiots deals with this little chunk of history. Well, yeah, and look at the size, look at the buildings of the asylums and the, and the psychiatric oh, world. Look at Orphan Alley, Alley, Al Al the film, right, Richard? Orphan Alley. It's like everything the ball of Victoria needed, you think of these yes. orphans, you know? And why is everyone an orphan? Because they tell you it was rubbish living and no one lived long. And people were having eight kids because six of them died, you end up with two. No, it's not what was going on. We know that now. They were living much better. We just seen the architecture. Life was better a few centuries ago because flat earth British liked their architecture. They weren't orphans because they built nice orphanages. And it just I'm just trying, I'm still trying to get over the fact that you know, after this reset, you know, they got these kids from somewhere. I mean, look, we know millions of kids a year go missing a year, even to this day, uh, excuse you know, around the world. 
Um, I'm convinced it's got to be millions. I know thousands. I know hundreds of thousands. But I mean, who's to say that millions of kids are being missing? Every, you know, every year. And uh, where are these kids are coming from? Or is this? Or do you have a people for them? I think we're them on a fan off on me. So you know, like the Matrix. Holy shit! These fuckers actually believe the Matrix was a documentary. Christ Almighty, people! Or, or maybe I should be saying Neo Almighty, people. <laughs>